What is up, my peepholes? This is your guy, Cly, and welcome back to Budget Tubing. Now, I'll be perfectly honest with you, today's mic is a tad bit more expensive than most of the others I'll be talking about in this series, but technically, it's still an intro-level microphone, and at $99, it's a whole heck of a lot cheaper than mid- to high-range mics. And the mic in question is the Audio-Technica AT2020. This is a cardioid condenser microphone with analog XLR hookups. And I know what some of you are thinking. Why would you want to spend $100 or more on a single pattern microphone when you can go out and for around the same price, pick up the Blue Yeti, which has four pickup patterns? And, well, the answer is actually pretty simple. Not only is the AT2020 specialized in the cardioid pattern, whereas the Blue Yeti is kind of stretching itself a little thin, but being an analog microphone, this has a whole lot more room to grow than the USB Blue Yeti. And don't worry, there will be a showdown video coming soon. Also, when I mentioned XLR a moment ago, that might have made some of you think about my previous video where I talked about the BM800. But unlike the BM800, the Audio-Technica has to have phantom power. This can get around that by using an XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable, and it works, but only so well. But I tried the same cable on the AT2020, and no luck. That means you're going to have to get yourself a phantom power supply of some sort, be it a cheapo $20 power driver or the mixer that I showed in the BM800 video. I'm not going to be using either of those for this video, but I am going to be using an M-Audio Audio Buddy, which I'm not going to show on camera because it's currently being used by my lavalier microphone, but just know it is a simple microphone preamp with phantom power and built-in audio gain. Though admittedly there is a USB version of the AT2020 out there called the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB Plus, but that's going to set you back about $125 to $150 depending on when and where you get it. So personally, I'm just going to stick with the AT2020 since I already have the gear to drive it. Now before I move on to the audio testing portion of this video, I just want to take a moment to talk about the build quality and accessories because, once again, those are important for future versus battles. Now let me pull this shot out a little bit so that I can talk about the build quality and accessories that are included with your AT2020. Now I'm going to go ahead and say that I feel like the AT2020 is a very well-made microphone. Not only does it feel good in the hand thanks to its weight, which they accomplished using a full metal construction, mind you, unlike the blue snowball I talked about last week, which cheated and uses a 3mm metal plate inside, but I'm a huge fan of the matte finished grill here. Though I do want to point out that despite having the grill open on both sides and on the top, and quite a few product photos getting it wrong actually, Whenever I see some of the mic holders available for the AT2020, they always have it pointing straight at you, but this is a side address microphone. Fortunately, Audio-Technica was kind enough to label the back so that you know to always talk at the logo. Also, talking about those mic holders, on the base here, you have a little bit of threading. Not a lot, but a little bit and that is rated at M22X1, just like a lot of other mics on the market. Though I do want to point out that it seems to have a bit of a truncated external threading, which is kind of interesting to me because some of my other externally threaded mics, like the Fifine K670 here, have the threading all the way down the shaft. Though you don't want to get it confused with mics like the BM800, which while threaded at M22X1, it's recessed. That does affect what kind of mounts you can use. Also, like all of the other mics I just mentioned, including the Blue Snowball, it does seem the AT2020 uses a 14mm capsule, though Audio-Technica does claim that they're custom-made, so it will most likely be attenuated differently, especially when you take into account some of the Chinese mics like the BM800, NW7000, BM700, etc. So keep that in mind when I make future comparison videos. Now when it comes to accessories included with the AT2020, you actually don't get that many. At least not by default. 
What I received with mine are an Audio-Technica branded padded mic bag, as well as a hard mount. And that's it. Though admittedly, you can easily get your hand on bundles that include extra accessories for little to no additional money. I know when I ordered mine, I received a blue coil pop filter, as well as a blue coil XLR cable. And that was one of the cheapest accessory bundles out there. There is plenty of choice. Though in regard to the accessories that are included, I have a couple of things to say. First off, about the included mic bag. I actually have one of the older models that came with my AT822 that I luckily thrifted for $5, and it does seem like they've increased the amount of padding inside. That's not going to make me put my AT2020 in it, but at least they have been upgrading these bags. For my AT2020, I actually use a watertight case I picked up at Harbor Freight. I'll link my previous review of that right now. And as for the hard mount, if you by any chance lose your hard mount and want to find the actual Audio-Technica model, it is the AT8466, and it'll cost you about 30 bucks. Though, keep in mind the mic is threaded at M22X1, like I mentioned earlier, and you should have no problem finding a mount that will get you by without costing you $30. Though be careful, it is not set up for recessed threads, kind of like this newer model, but anything else will be perfectly fine. Now give me a second to set the mic up so that we can move on to the audio quality tests. All right, I've got the AT2020 hooked into phantom power, the phantom power hooked into my audio capture PC, my phone hooked up to the Bluetooth speaker, and the Bluetooth speaker hooked up to the selfie stick. Let's go ahead and pop the cardioid capture pattern graphic onto the screen and hope everything lines up while I hit the music. So looking at the audio capture waveform right now, I'm going to go ahead and say this is definitely a cardioid microphone and a pretty bang up one at that. Yes, there was a little bleed when I had the speaker behind the mic, but you're always going to get that due to the fact that condenser microphones are designed to be sensitive so that they pick up more nuance in any audio source that it's trying to capture. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the screen capture so you can see everything in Audacity and Fritcher. All right, we're in Audacity, and as you can see, the AT2020 is insanely sensitive. Not only do I have my digital gain set to a measly 11%, but the controls on my audio buddy are set to just shy of 25% hardware gain. I'd say I'm in the 15 to 20% range myself. And yet, according to the indicator on Audacity, I'm coming in hot at around negative 12 decibels with the occasional peak in the negative 4 to negative 2 range. That's kind of crazy when you take into account how little extra juice I'm putting into this thing. And that means lower device noise. As for my orientation with the mic, I'm about 4 inches or so away from the mic so that I can take advantage of the proximity effect. And don't worry, I am using a pop filter. And as for the effects that I'm using on this audio, as per usual, all I'm doing is mixing it down to a listenable level. I'm doing nothing else. I want you to hear the capture raw to see if it's useful for what you need. Anyway, let me back up a second so that you can hear a more normal speaking range. I mean, most streamers are going to be sitting away from the mic, not on top of it like I am. Okay, I'm about one foot or so away from the mic. I'm doing a little bit more projection so that everything hits the capsule, and yet, looking at Audacity, it's picking me up just fine. It'll probably take you a second to get used to this sound because it will be a little bit quieter than what I was doing earlier, but all in all, not much of a difference, to be perfectly honest. Anyway, I'm going to stay at this orientation and hop over to Fritcher to show you the frequency response. Welcome to Fritcher. I'm still about a foot away from the microphone so that I'm not tainting the audio with the proximity effect. Let's go ahead and pop a frequency response chart that was kindly provided by Audio-Technica onto the screen and see how this mic measures up. As you can see, according to the chart, this is supposed to have a frequency response between 20 and 20,000 hertz, and I'm going to say it's about right. 
Yes, I'm seeing a lot of drop off in the 50 to 100 hertz range, but at this point, I'm going to blame my voice since they didn't see it. They were probably using a test tone. I'm going at this gorilla style, and I see this on a lot of microphones. So the onus is on me for that one. As for everything else, it looks very similar to the chart provided, and that means we're getting a nice flat response with more than likely true to life audio reproduction which is great for most things people are going to be using this microphone for, and it gives you a lot of flexibility in adding effects and modifications in post. Now let's talk specifics. I know I said in my Blue Snowball review last week that I was going to talk about the microphone's resolution more earlier in the video, and I didn't hear. But the reason for that is simple. There's not much to say. This is an analog microphone instead of a USB mic, so you're not limited by the internal digital audio converter like you are with the Snowball and the Yeti and whatnot. So instead, you're limited by your computer's internal audio capture card. In this case, I've got one that records at 96 kilohertz at 24 bit, though my main editing PC has an Audigy 2ZS built into it with front panel audio interface, which is very nice. Sadly, that computer is extremely loud, so I need to mod it a little bit. But there, I could record at 192 kilohertz at 24 bit. And this mic could come along with me for every step of that journey. It evolves. That is the beauty of XLR microphones. And I think I'm going to do a proper video on USB versus XLR in the future, especially since I've got some dual mode mics coming up. Now, as for the price, 100 bucks for this level of audio with a known name brand behind it, which means you get a warranty, you get the ability to return, replace, and all that other stuff. Yeah, it's worth it. The only thing I would say to be wary of is there have been rumors of counterfeit AT2020s making the rounds on Amazon. So if you're going to buy one, they're the same price in places like Guitar Center. So if you have a local store that you can pick one up for the same price as they are on Amazon, I would suggest doing that instead. And no, this is not sponsored by Guitar Center because ultimately I don't shop there due to the fact that most of their prices are above what I can get the mics for elsewhere. So this is one of those rare circumstances where I'm like, oh, you know what? Guitar Center is not that bad. Anyway. I've got a lot more stuff to run through the ringer. I just had a really fun Wish.com review come in, so <laughs> look forward to that one in the future. Anyway, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.